Well, speaking of uh, themes, the one that's been in focus, very sharp focus actually from the 4th of June is the entire capital goods space. We saw those knee-jerk reactions play out on the 4th. A lot of these stocks were, you know, getting sold very, very aggressively. Then there was some buying yesterday. Of course, PSUs did really well, uh, including some of the PSU capital goods themes as well. So how should investors now approach this sector? What should the portfolio call be? Uh, we've got Renu Baird of IFL, IFL Securities joining in. And before Renu, before I come to you, hi, great to have you on the show. I just want to read out some of the changes that you've made to the portfolio and the downgrades for the benefit of, of our viewers. Let's just pull up those uh, graphics. Now, IIFL Securities has downgraded ABB um, uh, and uh, Siemens uh, as well. Uh, ABB and, uh, sorry, not Siemens, ABB and CG Power from a buy to an ad. And Thermax and uh, Data Patterns, they have been uh, moved from an ad to a reduce. Uh, they still prefer some stories like a Siemens and I think like a, a BHEL as well. So some changes in the portfolio over there. Uh, yeah, now we have the graphics uh, up for you. So those are some of the downgrades that are playing out. So Renu, let's start right there. This whole narrative and the, the whole debate is around valuations, right? I don't even want to start with the with the runway of growth, etc. But first, on the valuation multiples, is that the only reason that you've done these downgrades? Or do you really feel that the, the pace of order, order wins, that could come down in the new era of coalition politics? I think the prime reason for downgrade essentially is stretched valuations uh, because we don't think so that the momentum should materially slow down. Uh, the government is broadly intact and the coalition doesn't seem to be a weak coalition. Uh, BJP still has uh, a good share of seat and at least what it seems like today that even if you have the coalition partners, uh, those partners are pro-growth and progressive in terms of uh, the growth and the investment. So it shouldn't be negative for the market. Historically, if we see coalition governments have been good for economic growth as well. So um, I think the, the recent downgrade is more in terms of inability to stretch the target PRs and valuation multiples beyond a point. And looking in terms of both weighing uh, the risk reward and the earnings, we think uh, there have been marginal downgrades. So largely, if you look at ABP, CG Power, we still like these names, but I think valuations are right. In the near term, we don't see any material upsides, which is where we have reduced them from buy to add more of hold at these levels. And if price is correct uh, because of external conditions, one can definitely add further in these names. And it, when it comes to uh, mid-cap names like Thermax, Data Pattern, we think uh, valuations have been completely um, off. And it becomes too difficult. As in the earnings today are pricing in uh, almost uh, two and a half, three years of growth. Valuations are ripe. And um, I think in incremental absolute alpha in these names is a challenge, which is where we have downgraded them from add to reduce. You know, you know uh, the valuation argument, maybe that would apply to Siemens as well, right? I'm, I'm looking at your note at 75 times. This is one of the, I mean, after ABB, it's probably the next most expensive capital goods stocks, but you've not downgraded this one. In fact, you like it. Why so? Yeah, uh, one of the key reasons why we like Siemens is yes, relative to ABB, it, is, it continues to be a discount. But at absolute level, if we see the event of demerger of the Siemens energy business, uh, would be one opportunity where investors would like to position themselves for um, a good high quality play on the power as well as the great equipment side of the portfolio, both for domestic as well as the global supply chains. And some of the other listed peers are highly illiquid uh, with uh, hardly any um, free float. So uh, we think in the near term, near to medium term, over the next nine months, uh, Siemens will continue to hold up to uh, these valuations because of the proposed demerger, which is there in place. And uh, to that extent, uh, we continue to like this name. And on dips, uh, one can definitely add further of Siemens. Uh, Renu, hi. Morning, Prashant here. Uh, you know, we've not seen too much m &A in this space, right? Uh, not, I mean, some of these players have not really bought other companies, so even though they've become very, very large. Uh, it could I mean, this is of course not uh, <clears throat> the, your uh, take is uh, absolutely uh, in terms of valuations, but uh, a strap-on kind of a meaningful acquisition for some of these companies could could it really change things? Suddenly make valuations a little more pal uh, uh, palatable? What's 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 the sense? And are you is there any uh, any any scope for such activity in the coming uh, coming months for some of these players? Well, when it comes to M and I think. A lot of capital goods companies are sitting on fat balance sheet, good cash rich books, almost 60 to 80 percent of net worth is actually in terms of cash, uh, which is diluting ROEs. But when it comes to MA uh, companies, uh, especially the MNC peers, have been looking for bolt on acquisitions, which will help to fill in the gaps. We had seen Siemens doing the MA of uh, CNS Electric, which took two years, but now it's beautifully turned around. ABB is looking to add something, but uh, again, it's a combination of 
getting the right target at the price at the same time it fits in the portfolio strategically uh, domestic companies like cg par also has been on the lookout uh, but uh, nothing comes cheap in cap goods even when it comes to m a and i think that is where uh, companies have tried to weigh in terms of organic growth and inorganic growth or m a so i don't see um, significant um, uh, movements or news flows on the m a side there could be selective more bottom up uh, but broadly the organic growth stories of these companies should play out and continue to be at the fore all right uh, hi renu good morning and good to see you in this is nigel on this side you know the government has been doing the heavy spending the you know the capex now all eyes were on the private capex are there green shoots or are you actually visibly seeing that private capex is picking up uh, private capex i think broadly has kept up the with the momentum in the last 3 to 6 months uh, we did see some slowdown and postponement of large cycle project award just ahead of elections and i think in the next one and a half month once we have uh, more clarity in terms of portfolio allocations and the government formation some of these projects will come on board and most of these projects are not planned for 6 months 12 months these are 7 8 year projects with payback uh, early decided so we don't see any material or visible di- dilution in the momentum in terms of private capex investments uh, they should continue and uh, from a government investment perspective if you look at the last vote or account for budget uh, it wasn't any way a very um, a thumping number so that momentum should broadly continue mm Uh, no, got that. I know uh, the other space that you track. Sorry, I'm digressing a little bit. Is of course the EMS companies, right? Uh, and uh, here again, huge momentum. Valuations arguably are high, but again, I mean, uh, visi- growth visibility uh, is is also there. Uh, Dixon, for example, has uh, had a new tie-up, uh, and we'll talk more about that uh, uh, hopefully with the management. But uh, what's what's the what are the top ideas in this space now, Renu, for you? in the ems space clearly valuations look uh, expensive but if you look at peg uh, pe to g i think growth is also equally strong uh, companies like canes have been growing uh, at 55 60% kagar uh, even names like sirma which have had challenges on the profitability side when it comes to top line growth uh, they have been at 40% plus kagar same for dixon so i think because of the high growth and the sweet spot that the sector is in valuations continue to remain elevated on a relative scale um, at the current perspective uh, change is among the topics in the space given relatively risk reward um, and uh, the absolute upside from these levels dixon to us looks reasonably or i would say fairly priced and sirma is one where we think uh, it will still take some time for um, the stock to come back or have investor confidence and that could still be a uh, lukewarm in the near term so we are uh, reduced on sirma but uh, we maintain buy uh, reiterated buy and a preferred pick as canes uh, technology in this space mm. so so uh, in terms of absolute upsides as well right i mean so if somebody yeah. uh, for, for those who are watching they put in a chunky bit here uh, you know year two years three years out you you you'd make decent absolute returns yeah on an absolute basis we see more than 20% returns uh, in uh, uh, canes as in the core ems business is on a very strong footing they have an order book of over 40 billion rupees Uh, which ensure that they should be 55 to 60 percent CAGR in the next two years, and margin profile is healthy. At the same time, uh, their plans on OSATs have been on track, and now I think in the next uh, month or so, as we have uh, the governments and the ministries in place, uh, we should see final announcements uh, or government approvals for subsidy for the OSAT plans also coming through. So I think uh, both from the core uh, EMS as well as the electronics uh, ecosystem. Uh, the company is pretty well placed in terms of positioning, uh, and from a risk reward, uh, we see comfortable thirty thirty five percent absolute return over the next uh, two years. Mm. Uh, no, got that. Uh, <clears throat> we leave it there, Renu. Great to speak with you as always. Appreciate it uh, very much here on CNBC TV eighteen. Uh, thank you uh, for that. So that's a quick chat on uh, you know some of the capital good names, uh, capital goods names, also EMS companies. Uh, from uh, with Reno and Reno saying that she likes Keynes uh, is one pick in that particular space. Dixon also she likes, but valuations are more kind of uh, reflective of the uh, potential going forward. So uh, that's the uh, bit. 